public sector will be maintained. Someone's got to develop a product that you and I as a consumer are going to want to buy. The country needs a comprehensive energy plan. And we don't know how long this will last. Hello, everyone, and welcome to For the Record. My guest, Joe Batista. I got to read this verbatim. Associate Athletic Director for Ice Hockey Operations and Director of Ice Arena and Hockey Campaign uh, for Penn State. One of the big stories came in September of 2010. Terry and Kim Pagula donated $88 million, uh, the largest gift in Penn State University history that will bring a new ice arena and the formation of men's and women's Division I hockey. And uh, Joe is one of the visionaries behind all of this. Joe, we're delighted to have you, and I know you've been smiling ever since the announcement. But you got to talk about how this relationship was facilitated between you and the Pagulas that turned this dream into reality. I mean, it's a great story. Well, it is, and thanks, Jed. Uh, this this really is an amazing experience that I'm going through along with a lot of other people, uh, including the Pagulas, who you know a lot of people maybe don't understand their passion besides Penn State. Is, is ice hockey. Uh, Kim is originally from the Buffalo area. Her parents were from Ottawa and Montreal. You know, Terry, although he never played ice hockey, um, fell in love with the sport through his son, his oldest son, Michael. And that's really how I first got to meet them. Uh, Michael came to our hockey camps here uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And Terry was his youth coach and uh, actually attended a coaching certification um, uh, 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 camp that we did and uh, I was one of the presenters and Terry and the family started attending Icer games when I was coach of the Icers and uh, really didn't know him that well back then it wasn't until if you fast forward to 2005 I get a phone call out of the clear blue sky Joe you, you're not gonna remember me my son came to your hockey camp um, but uh, why don't we have division one hockey why aren't we like Wisconsin and Minnesota Michigan he said I I really believe that that's what's missing from Penn State's athletic resume is, is big time college hockey. Well, that, that's how it all kind of got started. We met for dinner. Um, I had no idea that he was a guy who had the kind of wealth that, that he possessed and uh, really kind of chuckled under my breath that, well, I don't think he really understands what this is gonna take. <laughs> right, right. But, but, it, but it, it, you know, went home, Googled his name, yelled to my wife, ID. I think this one might be for real. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we've become good friends with the Pagulas do a lot with them but again uh, I don't I think I love hockey he takes it to a whole different level that's how passionate he is about sport kind of like Wall Street you know when Charlie Sheen got to, I bagged the elephant gecko right because <laughs> I know you and I have always talked for years about this was the circle being completed I think as far as the profile for Penn State athletics but there was a downturn in the economy. Conversations, you know, went forward. I'd always heard the number was about 30 million with some fundraising, but now you get it all with one fell swoop. And I know you're looking to raise another 10 million, but, you know, talk about when this became reality, because I know you were seen with them over in Chicago at the Big Ten football media type of things, and that, oh, maybe something's close. You know how things hit the air. Well, you know, when Terry, uh, it looked like this was going to happen by, back in about 2007, but then when the market went south, you know, things mm -hmm. slowed down. And so we, uh, uh, when he sold the company to, to Shell um, in, in uh, May, that was when the, the uh, initial deal got signed, and then the closing was in late July, we started the meetings at a much accelerated pace. And I got to tell you, Jed, there's a whole team of Penn State people. I, you know, a lot of people look at me and think, you know, I had, and maybe because we ran a good camp and attracted him that, right. but Penn State's, you know, our office of physical plant, our development office, you know, obviously Tim Curley, who lives right across the street from the Pagulas uh, in Bear Meadows. Uh, they have a home here in State College. And, uh, you know, so certainly Tim Curley had an awful lot to do with this, as did a lot of other people. But, you know, when it's all said and done, we went on a trip with President Spanier, a uh, host of other Penn State um, uh, folks, and Terry Pagula and Cliff Benson, who's his project advisor and a Penn State alum who uh, worked with the Penguins and started hockey in the hood in Pittsburgh, it sits on the NHL Diversity Council, et cetera. Um, we all got together, went to Notre Dame, we went to Miami of Ohio. Uh, that was a great trip. That got everybody really zeroed in. And then a week later, we all, uh, Terry and I and Cliff and our wives all went up to Minnesota to see Mariucci Arena. And we were scheduled then to go to Boston to see Boston College and Boston University. 
And after we got done with the, the time we spent with uh, Coach Lucia and the athletic department staff and the builders and everybody else in Minnesota, Terry said, I don't need to see any more. Let's get this done. So we really knew when you guys saw us mm -hmm. at the Big Ten Media that, that this thing was going to move forward. And then it was up to you know, our, our, our crew that puts together these kinds of uh, you know, agreements. Uh, and it took about three weeks. So this really, once we got, you know, he sold his company, this thing just accelerated. Yeah, you were starting to really uh, roll downhill. What, what are their visions when they made the commitment and things? I, I know it might be tough in a minute and a half, but what are their visions? You know, they're donating $88 million. It's right. going beyond hockey. So what's the vision it's, it's the gift to the community. It, they, you know, Terry and Kim want this to be a gift to Center County, to Penn State faculty, staff, students, to the town itself, to, you know, to make this a de winter destination for people to come. And, and he wants to expose Penn Staters to the sport he loves, and that's hockey and skating. His daughter was a figure skater. Mm -hmm. um, and this is gonna have two sheets of ice. It's gonna serve well over a million to, to close to a million and a half people a year, have a huge economic impact on the area. But he wants to see Pennsylvania be thought of in the same light as Massachusetts, Michigan, and Minnesota when it comes to hockey. And he, he just met with our uh, staff of uh, physical plant, all of our people that are on the architect team, construction management team, and gave that vision to them. That while Minnesota may call itself the state of hockey, Detroit hockey town, we really want this to be Hockey Valley. Welcome back to For the Record. Jed Donahue with Joe Batista. We're talking about the formation of uh, Division I hockey at Penn State, but more importantly, a new arena, uh, which is going to be located at the uh, corner of Curtin and University Drive, Curtin Road, University Drive. Um, there are a lot of different speculations as to how big it's going to be, uh, between five and 6,000. Uh, you and I have been talking about just the success of minor league hockey. You've got NHL on both ends of the state and the Flyers and the Penguins. Uh, the Hershey Bears, which older than anybody, over in the South Central Quarter, have moved from the Hershey Arena over to the Giants Center, the Reading Royals. Uh, it just goes on and on. Johnstown, uh, I've got one up there in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. But there's a void here. And there's no Division I hockey, amazingly, uh, in, in this state. There is a passion for it, maybe even more so than basketball, but you want to make the right decision on capacity at the outset, don't you? Yes, we do. And actually, there are two Division I varsity hockey teams in oh, the state. That's right, Robert Morris. Robert Morris and Mercyhurst. Okay. They just, you know, you, you may not understand, you know, where they play, but Robert Morris has already beaten Notre Dame in Michigan this year. So, you know, that, they've, they've built a heck of a program down there. I don't think people realize the number of quality players are coming out of Pennsylvania, you know, and, and they don't understand because of the influence of the Flyers, the Bears, the Penguins. Uh, Pennsylvania's actually had quite a history. There's 78 players on Division One rosters right now that are out of Pennsylvania, and there's 18 that have played either up in the NHL or in the AHL at some point this year already. And, you know, our goal was to take that to a whole different level. And that's, that's one of Terry's visions as well, is to see us, you know, maybe the next Sidney Crosby comes from the hills of Pennsylvania. And, you know, we're, we'd rather have him come here than going over to uh, one of our competitors. Well, I went to high school in Massachusetts, and uh, the passion for high school hockey there is equal to what football is here in Pennsylvania, I can assure you, because I went to a state final where there's 14,000 people at the old Boston Garden. I think this has a chance to be a, a destination. What are some of the things you're working on with the architects, the designers, as far as the new arena? And you're looking, what, 2013 for it to debut or open and things like that? Right, that, that's what we're shooting for right now. And again, if unless we run into some site problems with utilities or something like that, you're looking at uh, t fall of 2013. Um, and we'll play our first varsity season actually in 2012, but we'll play out of our current Greenberg arena. Uh, not ideal, but you know, uh, I think people will understand that we can't just suddenly play Division I hockey against Minnesota and Wisconsin and Michigan and Boston College and Notre Dame. Uh, we've got to ramp it up. So we'll play a little bit of an independent schedule for the first two years and then we'll, we'll be in, hopefully, in a conference in 2014. We're looking at a probably 6,000-seat facility, when it's all said and done, that's going to be able to host not just college hockey, but we're, we've already talked to the Penguins and the Flyers about holding training camp here, playing an exhibition game, uh, having ice shows from Disney on ice to Smucker's Holiday on ice, Stars on ice, et cetera, um, high school state competition, 
uh, all these things. It's it's a facility that's going to serve a wide. We'll be open 360 days a year, Jed. Sir, you know, seven days a week, 14 to 18 hours a day. It's just going to be a you know a winter destination for Penn Staters and anybody coming to visit Center County. Yeah, and you're also, I mean, 360, that's going to be spring, summer, fall, and all of that sort of thing. And that's that's kind of what you got to look at, too. I mean, you're going to house Division One men's and women's, but you've got other events that, you know, you've got to look and to accommodate, and obviously public skating and things like that, and also involving the students. Sure. Well, we look at the intramural program is just going to blossom. Uh, you look at a school like Miami of Ohio, which, you know, actually is a rural school like we are, a little bit smaller than us. They have 400 intramural broom ball teams and most people broom ball is just a game like just as I said you're, you're playing with a mini volleyball with a broom familiar and, with it yeah, and you don't have <laughs> skate you don't have to skate so you know we can't even grow that sport right now because we only have the one sheet of ice with the two sheets of ice the main arena and then the, the auxiliary rink we're going to be able to you know you could have a hockey game going on in the main arena and still have a public skating uh, you know session going on in that studio rink we're within seven to ten minutes walking distance of 70 percent of the students who live on campus and when you start looking at you know the kinds of opportunities we'll have commencement in there you know we're going to be able to have ha happy volley you know we'll have the main arena will be shut down for a period of time mm -hmm. from annual maintenance that sort of thing but we'll have basketball in there we'll have you know those sorts of things so it's going to be a multi-use facility but it will be primarily ice sports you know we've been approached by people that want to start short track speed skating <laughs> curling you name it. Curling's and, big, man. You know the Olympics, right? Yeah, absolutely. I was mesmerized by it. No, I mean, it's, you know, people have no idea how, how you know, uh, passionate people that are in ice sports are. And that's why I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, utmost confidence, as did the Pagulas, that otherwise they wouldn't have gotten involved in this, that this is really going to be a, uh, a, a big impact economically. Uh, it's also going to provide kinesiology opportunities, whether it's skating classes, beginning mm -hmm. hockey classes, you know, research opportunities. Um, you know, we have some great ideas on how to make this an interdisciplinary uh, facility and do some research and those sorts of things. And all of that is exciting. And, uh, you know, the, the big part of it right now, the, the biggest hurdle is that we've got we've to do the heavy lifting now, get the building built, et cetera. Well, you know, you mentioned too, like 78 kids are on Division One rosters. There's Division Two, II, Division Three. There's women's programs, which is, uh, you know, blossoming. It's you know, Penn booming. State is very proud of their tradition as far as the way they promoted women's athletics, even before Title IX, forced Absolutely. everybody to do it. But you know, now all of a sudden, you've got opportunities there, and we're seeing the youth programs get bigger and better but you gotta have a place to play that's why families i know will travel six hours one way just to get a 4 a.m. ice time it, it's, it's that's crazy passionate, out there. You know, i know we, they are crazy we, we'll call it passionate we'll agree but it's um, a little bit of both there's no doubt it's obsession i mean the, uh, I st i'm 50 years old i still play on a men's league team and you know adult league uh, that's called the nhl the nittany hockey league <laughs> and on tuesday nights we have the ohl which is old time hockey league but you know i would be willing to bet that our women's program at penn state will actually be more will be nationally competitive faster than even the men um, we've been contacted by some of the top recruits in the country that are saying, well, I might go play a year, extra year of prep school hockey, uh, you know, just kind of wait come, you guys you know, out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to come in and get on the ground floor. And, uh, you know, this is, like I said, it's going to be exciting. We're, we're you know, we're going to be involved with USA Hockey, USA Figure Skating. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of events, international events that are going to be going on. And not just Canada, but, you know, talking about Finland, Sweden, Switzerland, you know, uh, there's going to be those. At some point, we'd like to host the National Junior Championships, those sorts of things. We'll bring in skating skating competitions. Uh, this facility, like you said, is going to really be a feather in the cap of this whole area. And, you know, the Pagulas are vested in this area. Uh, Terry is from Carbondale originally, uh, went to Worthington Scranton for two years before coming here. Uh, he credits Penn State's uh, Earth and Mineral Science and right. Petroleum Natural Gas Program with you know, really giving him the start that he got that, that, that has made him successful. All right, we're with Joe Batista for the record. We'll talk about what are the dynamics when you form a Division I program from the ground up. For the record, back with more after this. 
Welcome back to For the Record, Joel Batista, who's in charge of, well, fielding a Division I uh, men's and women's program and raising $10 million for, uh, you know, a new arena which is going to be built. Uh, we just talked about that. Now let's get to the, the hockey part of things a little bit and how this is going to work. Uh, first, you know, the timeline is going to be about 2012, the 2012-2013 campaign. Is that what you're looking at? That'll be the first varsity season for both the men and the women. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, at that point, we'll probably have given four to five scholarships per team uh, because you can't just give out 18 scholarships in the first year. That's the maximum you can mm -hmm. um, because then you have nothing to give. You know, you, you really have to just ramp this up. Um, and and our, actually, our next step is to hire the coaches the men's and women's coaches, and that'll be done. Uh, the search will start uh, in the new year. We hope to have the coaches selected by uh, May, and, and they'll really have the whole 2011 and 12 season just to recruit, put their staffs together, help get people fired up about hockey in the community, work camps, clinics, those sorts of things. Um, and they won't be burdened with having to actually coach. They can really spend their time essentially drafting up a team um, that, that gets them started. Because you know, as well as I do, that the, the recruiting is three, four years out. And you, you sure don't just, is. you know, so you're starting to, to do that work. And, you know, we, we have the opportunity to really, uh, you know, do some great things here with, uh, you know, the hockey programs. And we're excited about that. Yeah. Well, what about a coach? You were just telling me that you want somebody that's kind of wired in as far as recruiting. Obviously, they're going to have to, you know, the academics part is going to come very much into play, uh, which shouldn't be a problem considering a lot of the prep schools have high academic Absolutely. standards anyway Absolutely. that uh, you're going to tap into. So that shouldn't be bad. But you got a Penn State name. You've got a golden opportunity for some of these student athletes coming in to build something and put a foundation in. And maybe excitement builds both ways. Absolutely, it does. I mean, I, right now, already the number of uh, inquiries we've gotten from uh, potential student athletes is amazing and we've got kids as I said that that are actually saying well I may stay and play an extra year juniors like or saying, go postgraduate yeah. prep school um, and then as far as the coaches are concerned you know you, you've got to have coaches that understand the recruiting uh, because that's the most important part of a college you know you've got to get good student athletes in here quality people character people you know we aren't going to just do what we have to do to win we want to bring in and do it the Penn State way and certainly you know doing it right uh, bringing kids in here that really do want to you know go on to make a, a difference out in the world after their Penn State career but we also hope to be able to you know have develop Olympians and professional athletes right. uh, here and you know so bringing in the kind of coaches that are able to develop those kinds of athletes is going to be critical. I don't think people real. I've been to Michigan, Michigan State. I've been out. I've seen the bean pot tournament. When you put like the bands in there and you've got five, six thousand people, probably three, four thousand students in there, you talk about a pretty wild night out. It's, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> it's crazy I mean, stuff you, and you, a good way. Right. Um, you know, it, it, you're looking at the big chill at the big house coming up. Uh, outdoor game in the big house between Michigan State and Michigan. They've sold 110,000 tickets to that game. And that's going to break the old world record, which was when Michigan played at Michigan State. Yeah, 75,000 for and, that. And right. So, you know, again, this I don't think a lot of people maybe who aren't in central Pennsylvania familiar with, you know, the you know how big hockey has gotten in the state. Um, you know, all you got to do is go down to Hershey and see the Bears, two-time Calder Cup. You know, champions. You got the Flyers playing in the Stanley Cup final last year. The Penguins winning the cup a couple years ago. Hockey's probably never been more popular in this state than it is right now, and it's growing. Right, and then you're right at the uh, precipice. You know, with this uh, new arena and things. As far as schedule, a lot of people. You'll be the sixth team with a Big Ten that's going to field a Division One team. However. You guys are in an interesting geographical situation where you're used to playing a Big Ten schedule with all your other sports. However, you got a lot of Eastern friends out here as well. So you're kind of right in the middle of the whole thing when you get into it from a hockey conversation point. Well, it's a great place to be, not just because we'll, we'll be able to play our Big Ten uh, you know, sister schools, but you know we can play Notre Dame, we can play Boston College, Boston University, Cornell, you know, uh, uh, the traditional powers in hockey are the five Big Ten schools, and then you have your Boston universities, your Boston College, Maine, New Hampshire, and then you go out west, and you, you know you're going to find a Minnesota Duluth, North Dakota, 
you know, Colorado College, Denver, schools like that, will have the ability to do that. Plus, we're going to be able to recruit from a very wide, you know, we certainly want to get the base of our athletes from Pennsylvania, but where all the contiguous states have hockey players. Right now, Minnesota Duluth, number one team in the country, starting goalie from Pittsburgh, leading scorer from Fairfax, Virginia. Hockey's changed. And so, uh, you know, again, I, I can't wait to see with our athletic brand, with this state-of-the-art facility, the, the potential for what we're going to be able to do here is exciting. Uh, we've had you on, I've had you on for years radio-wise. We've talked about just, wow, this would be huge if it could ever happen. Well, now it's here. You're doing like two breakfast meetings a day <laughs> trying to figure this out. You coached the Icers for 19 years. You won it all six times. But how does this complete the circle? We talked about this earlier, but how does this complete the circle as far as Penn State athletics? Well, I think, you know, if you were to look at... And as know, far as the university and the right, whole thing, too. Absolutely. The whole you, thing, Joe. You start looking at, you know, because this is, a, you know, unlike Beaver Stadium, where, you know, the only people that get to use Beaver Stadium are football players. You know, and even the Bryce Jordan Center, you know, men's and women's basketball teams, you know, your local youth league isn't playing. The same ice sheet that the men and women's hockey teams are going to use, you're going to have youth hockey teams playing. You're going to have, you know, uh, sled hockey for, uh, you know, the physically challenged uh, kids. We just had an exhibition game up here. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to do so many things that, you know, and, and you'll be able to say, wow, I skated on the same ice as this guy who's an NHL draft pick, you know, this girl who's going to be on the Olympic team, you know, uh, so it's a unique experience. And because of the location, which is ideal. Um, uh, we couldn't have asked for a better better location. It's going to be a magnet for all kinds of activities and I just can't, like I said, I, I think people when they when they see the atmosphere and we're working with the architects right now, we want to make this, we're not going to be the biggest facility, mm -hmm. but we want to be the best, we want to be the loudest, we want to have that home ice advantage. All right. Well, congratulations. Can't wait Thank to you. get an update uh, when we see the uh, when we see the pictures of this thing, the drawings coming up in 2011. We appreciate watching for the record for our entire staff here at WHBL. Have a wonderful day. Everybody.